Hi everyone, this is Kathy from House of TOEFL. And today, just for fun, I thought I would do a lecture about a book I recently read. This book is called Dracula by Bram Stoker. You may have seen the movie. It was made in the 90s. It starred Winona Ryder, Gary Oldman, and Keanu Reeves. It was a very good movie. And I decided to actually finally read the book. And I thought it was great. And so I thought I should make a short lecture about it. So when I start to look down, that means that the lecture has begun because I will be reading off a script. I will read you the questions at the end. And of course, as usual, the questions and the answer key can be found in the video description. So let's begin the lecture. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a book I recently read, Dracula by Bram Stoker, written in 1897. It is considered a tale of Gothic horror, and it takes its place among some of the best horror writing I've ever read, along with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and of course, a picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This book was sitting on my bookshelf collecting dust for years. I finally picked it up around Halloween this year and started to read it, and I'm glad I did. When you read Dracula today, many themes will seem familiar to you, as they have been recycled and repeated in modern vampire fiction. There is a sinister, monstrous character of great evil, in this case, Count Dracula, a merciless vampire who lives in an enormous castle off a cliffside in Transylvania. However, what makes the book Dracula unique is that the story is told with a series of letters, diary entries, and newspaper articles. The narrators of these are the novel's protagonists. The events portrayed in the novel take place largely in England and Transylvania within the same year. The novel follows the journey of a particular vampire, Count Dracula, and chronicles his attempt to invade England from Transylvania in search of new blood to drink. In the novel, many of the themes and plot points we see in modern day vampire stories are already present. For instance, Dracula is afraid of garlic and crucifixes. Dracula himself has lived for hundreds of years, though he, he can appear to look young in order to deceive others. He is very weak during the day and becomes stronger at night. Clearly, these themes are repeated, repeated in shows like True Blood and books and movies such as Interview with the Vampire. Dracula sleeps in a coffin-like box to regain his strength, another typical vampire trope. In his enormous castle, Dracula has vampire slaves and servants who are there to wait upon his every whim. Because he has lived for hundreds of years, he has been able to accumulate great wealth and can travel across the sea in expensive accommodations. Dracula preys on the weak or victims he himself has weakened by draining their blood. One of the central characters, Lucy, is bitten by Dracula and then transforms into a vampire herself, a theme you will see repeated, of course, in many later novels and movies, such as Anne Rice's seminal book mentioned earlier, Interview with the Vampire, which was later made into a movie starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. In these types of work, the most powerful vampire has the ability to turn mortal humans into immortal vampires with a bite. Lucy's best friend, Mina, fits a stereotypical Victorian female role. She is submissive to her fiance. She's emotional and very sweet. She is not a modern day feminist in any way. In fact, she mocks a progressive notion of the time of the new woman and accepts her traditional place in society. In this respect, she ultimately embodies the ideal Victorian woman. She is, in so many ways, a woman of her time. Then the hero of the book emerges about a third of the way through. His name is Van Helsing, and he has come from Amsterdam armed with great historical knowledge of vampires. 
Until his arrival, the other heroes of the story do not understand who Dracula is or what he wants. Van Helsing has been studying vampires for a great deal of time and is able to explain this enemy to his newfound friends, who then go in pursuit of Dracula, ch chasing him back to Transylvania. Van Helsing serves as a prototype, a template, if you will, of the hero, hero who rides in from a foreign outside land to help save the day. I don't want to, and I won't give away the ending here, so I will leave it at that and hope that you read the book yourself. But do keep in mind, it was written in 1897. And as our language has changed significantly since that time, it might be a bit of a challenge for my students to read. However, if you can get past the linguistic difficulties, I would love to know your thoughts and please do leave them in the comments. There were vampire books before Dracula, but it is Bram Stoker's gothic epic that has come to define the vampire horror genre more than any other novel. From its iconic tropes to its now familiar cast of characters, from Mina to Van Helsing and of course Count Dracula himself, the novel has lost none of its power to terrify and enthrall its audience. I truly believe that without this seminal book, Dracula, written so long ago, vampire stories would be very different today. And movies like Twilight or comedies such as What We Do in the Shadows, which is a very funny satirical show about vampires living together in New York, vampire fiction would not enjoy the popularity that it does. Beep. That's the end of the lecture. I will now read the question. Question one. What is the main topic of the lecture? Question two, what does the professor mean by this? This book was sitting on my bookshelf collecting dust for years. Question three, according to the professor, what makes this book unique? Question four. How does the professor feel about her students reading the book? Question five. According to the professor, what does Mina represent? Question six. How is Van Helsing different from other characters in the book? Okay, and the question and answer choices are found in the description. And then a little bit below that, you will find the answer key. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do read the book, please be sure to comment. I would really love to hear your thoughts about the book. Um, as always, I'm Kathy from House of Tolfo, and good luck on your test. Thank you. Have a great night.